All praise is due to Almighty Allah who has preserved our lives up to the present moment. We bear witness that there is no one that deserves to be worshipped except Almighty Allah. And we bear witness that Prophet Muhammad is Allah's servant and messenger. May the peace and blessings of Allah continue to be with the Prophet, his companions and followers and those who are his sincere followers of the last day. The focus of our sermon this afternoon is to address the issue of fasting, which all of us are engaging in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that fasting is prescribed on us, the believers, as it was prescribed for those before us, that we may learn self-restraint. This fasting is for an appointed number of days that is in the month of Ramadan. But whosoever embarks on a journey or who is sick can postpone the fasting after these two events. Therefore, whosoever witnesses this month must, fear, must fast therein. It is the month in which the Holy Quran was revealed, which is a guidance to mankind, and the Fulkan, that is the criterion between truth and falsehood. Therefore, whosoever witnesses this month should fast. If we look at the legislation of fasting in Islam, we will discover that the legislation of fasting took place in Medina. And there is a wisdom in that. In that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the teacher, the nourisher of mankind started by nurturing the faith or the soul of man to accept whatever responsibility that is imposed on it. The Muslims in Mecca, they were being trained, they were being taught the principles of Tawheed, the principles of oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that when the issue of fasting came, they gladly, hastily accepted this command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without hesitation. They willingly accepted to fast. Why? Because Iman had first of all taken place in their heart. Because the heart that is devoid of Iman cannot bear responsibility of fasting. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has been training the Muslims brought the issue of fasting when the Muslims can best shoulder the responsibility. Secondly, if we look at the nature of man, he is a bidimensional being. In that, in, the, in a single human being, there is the animal tendencies and the angelic tendencies. When the animal tendency in man is allowed to prevail over the angelic tendency, the satanic tendency in man will be aroused and there will be chaos, anarchy and disorder on the surface of the heart. Similarly too, if the angelic tendency in man, that is the spiritual, is allowed to prevail over the flesh, there will be imbalance. The duty, the responsibility of Khilafa will not be made possible. But Islam is a balanced way of life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, therefore, by his special grace, started to be spending to be sending prophets and messengers so as to guide man 
from the trappings of materialism. Because if there are no prophets, if there were no prophets, there will not be any guidance for man in order to live as he ought to live on the surface of the heart. Because man wants to live on the heart. Because he has those earthly tendencies in him. Allah says, Wa is called Arab Bukalil Malahika in Nija Ilu fil Arid Khalifa. That remember when your Lord told the angels that I wish to create my five durants on the surface of the heart. Man is to live on the heart. Therefore, he has the tendency to be hungry, to be thirsty, to have sexual hurt. But if man is left alone like this, there will be chaos. There will be disorderliness. So there is need for the prophets of Allah to come and guide us. That is why the issue of fasting was legislated. The fasting is to serve as a check on our passion. Because when man just lives like that, without a shake on his passion, he will not be able to fulfill the trust, the amana, which the heavens and the hearts and the mountains have avoided. Allah says, Inna aradna la amanata ala samawat wal art wal jibal faabayna an yahmilnaha wa ashfaqna minha wa hamala al insan inna wukana of volume and jahula. Allah says, we place the trust before the heavens and the earth and the mountains. They shrank away from it. They refused to carry it. But man has accepted responsibility. Therefore, to serve as khilaf, as khilafatullah al al heart, the fasting of Allah on service of the heart, fasting is one of the prerequisites for man to show that responsibilities. Thirdly, if we look at the month of Ramadan, there is a kind of similarity, connection. By connection, I mean divine connection between this month and the Quran al Karim. Because in the month of Ramadan, Jubil alayhi salatu was salam will come every night of Ramadan to be teaching the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the arrangement of Al-Qur'an al karim And because of this training, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Qana hajwa bin nas. He, he was the most generous of all human beings. He was so generous, more than the wind. And during this month, he will engage in a lot of tradition of Al-Qur'an al karim Not only that, there are other ibadat. Now, let us look at fasting in another way. Through the institution of fasting, the universality of Islam becomes more pronounced. Look at today. Look at the East and the West. The black, the white. The rich, the poor. The learned and the ignorant. All of them regardless of lingua affiliation, sexual affiliation, or racial affiliation. All of us, we are engaging in the same acts. Fasting in the month of Ramadan. There is no disagreement as to which month should we fast. All of us, we agree. We agree that this month is a month of fasting. It's a month of recitation of Al-Quran al karim It's a month of striving vis Allah. It's a month of sacrifice. It's a month of readiness to submit to the instructions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, at the first night of Ramadan, all the gates of Al-Jannah shall be opened. And all the gates of hellfire shall be closed. 
devils, shaitan, and his companions shall be put to shake. You can see. Go and look at the mosques today. Increase in attendance. Even the regular attendance to the mosque will not even have space to see that. Why? Who is he that is inviting them? Is it one malam? No. It is because of the grace of Ramadan. Yeah. And it is a testimony to the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The man forgets that, remembers now that he is a Muslim. He has not been praying, but Ramadan has come. You can see him coming to the mosque, reading Al-Quran al-Kareem, observing Nawafil, listening to, 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 to Tafsir of Al-Quran al-Kareem. In fact, our rich men, they get more generous during this month. Before Ramadan, Muslims see sponsoring program on the television as a taboo. We leave this into the Christians. They bombard our TV with all sorts of propaganda. But by the grace, special grace of Ramadan, our rich men now are becoming more alert to their responsibilities. They are sponsoring programs on the television to enlighten people. Why? Who is urging them? The special grace of Ramadan. And Allah is saying, Allah is saying, Monsama Ramadan, Imano wa hitisaban, Gufira la umota koddamo ni bambi. Whosoever observe this fasting, out of faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and out of hope that, O oh Allah, I fast for your sake. I expect my reward from you. I am sacrificing for your sake. Nobody will police me inside my house if I eat my food in the afternoon or I drink water or I go near my wife. Nobody will police me. But Allah Allah sees me. Therefore, for Allah's sake, for the reward from Allah's banu wa ta'ala, I am fasting. Rasulullah Islam said, all his past sins shall be forgiven. Not only this, this unity, this unity, which cuts across all races. Who can achieve it if not only in Islam? And you see, this is a cause of envy for our enemies. Our enemies, they are sad in this month. Why? Because we are united. And through the power of Ramadan, the unity of the Muslims is achieved. It's a lesson, it's a lesson for every one of us that we should not allow the lessons from Ramadan to just go away like that without us inculcating the spirit of sacrifice the spirit of unity amongst us not only this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not only interested in you forsaking your foods and drinks and your wives no Rubba sahib laysa lahu min siyani ila jo there are many of us who are fasting but because they do not imbibe the teachings of fasting, they have no reward other than hunger. This month, guide your tongue, guide your hair, guide your eyes, guide your hands, guide your legs. It is not only your mouth that should be fasting. All your organs should be fasting. And if any ignorant person comes to accost you, comes to provoke you in his soul him in his soul him i am fasting you see you can broadcast you are fasting don't say i don't want them to know that i am fasting broadcast it the social said say it in his soul him i am fasting not for you for allah's word on what allah let anybody say whatever he likes but they will say when the muslims are fasting then they can make noise they can do this and that Go and die in anger. This is Islam. We are obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, the lessons of fasting, we should inculcate it. And we should also see this month as the month we can embark on a lot of da'wah. There are many of our Muslim brothers and sisters who never came to the mosque before Ramadan. But they are now coming. It's a duty on you and I that we should not let them go with Ramadan. 
they should remain as Muslim praying Muslims even after Ramadan may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve our lives to witness more and more of Ramadan may this month not be the last for us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala overlook our shortcomings and all the lessons and teachings of Ramadan may we be able to imbibe it and practice it so that inshallah we will be among the true fasting people on Yom Al-Qiyamah